Welcome back. Got a 2015 Ford F-350 with a 6.7 liter power stroke diesel and actually going to be transforming this into a competition race truck uh, that we're going to be trailering back and forth to the racetrack. Going to be doing some drag racing with it. So I've got quite a, quite a few upgrades to come on it. But first we're going to start out with uh, removing the EGR and be stalling a new SMB cold air intake along with uh, some SCT live wire tunes and then also a shift on the fly. And uh, also be putting a five inch exhaust on it, which I may uh, do a separate video on that. So we'll uh, go ahead and get started with the uh, EGR. Pop your hood first. Okay, so with your hood popped, so over here on the passenger side, this big unit right here is gonna be the uh, EGR, which we'll be removing. And if you guys have done your research, you know that uh, these exhaust pipes here, when we go to remove them, they have a tendency of breaking off some of these bolts, especially the one down in there. So the guy that owns this truck for the last two weeks, he has been, uh, as soon as he gets home from work, he soaks all these bolts in PB blaster. And then uh, when he gets back up in the morning, he'll do the same thing before he leaves for work. So he did it to these two here, got a couple there. And then take a look in here. You got a couple more right in here and then way down in there let me see if i can get my light in there you can see we got two more back in there and those are the ones that really tend to break down there so what i'm gonna do is um i'll probably spray these again one more time and this truck has been idling and drove it for a little bit so the uh, exhaust is really hot right now, and I think that'll help pull these out. So I think I'm going to go ahead and try to break these free first before I do anything else uh, while the engine's still hot. And hopefully everything goes good and I don't break any of these off. So like I said, just grab some PB Blaster. Go ahead and soak these again. And actually on the back side here as well. And then down in there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start out with the hardest ones first. So that one down in there. And uh, those are gonna be eight millimeters. And then again, just be careful because this is still hot. And uh, what I'll be using, just a swivel adapter there with an eight millimeter and then some extensions on a 3 8 ratchet. So let's see if we can break this free. And you wanna just kinda of take your time on this. Um, Cause you don't wanna break these. And, and then actually, geez. So you see how loose that is? So I don't know if that's cause of the PB blaster or the heat. And let me just make sure. So yeah, looks like that one actually is coming out. Alright, let me move my camera here and we'll do the other one. Okay, so for that one, I'll use a uh, quarter inch drive with a long quarter inch uh, extension and then my 8 millimeter. And I'll go down through here. And let's try this one. So, not sure. So, yeah, that one actually. And if you guys have to, you can. I heard that if you tighten these up again and then back up, that tends to help too. So I think, cool, that one looks good too. Let's hope the rest of them come out this easy. 
These are the two that I was really worried about. So now let's try these ones here. Same thing. Use your quarter inch, eight millimeter. And that one really came out easily. So for that bottom one there, I'm gonna try this uh, flex socket here with an extension. And then let's see if that works. It's kind of hard to get in here. Just don't want to strip that out either. Let me try that. And okay, well. You can see that one's coming off very easy as well. So looks like this uh, PB blaster soaking it for two weeks trick is actually working good. Um, the guy that did this, he I think he said he went through one whole can or two cans, something like that, but just soaked them pretty good. And let's go ahead and try these last two here. good this back side here all right so as you can see it's either that PB blaster worked really well or um, taking these out while it's still hot really you can see I barely put any effort into that and that's the, one of the most things I was worried about on here so with those all broken free, I think, we're not gonna have any issues with it. So I'll go ahead and uh, just make sure, get these out just a little more, and then we'll let this cool a little bit here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and drain the uh, primary cooling system here. You got your radiator drain petcock here. And um, I'm doing this because if you follow the channel, you know I just did a video on this truck probably three months ago or so, or maybe a little more than that. But I showed you how to drain the primary and secondary cooling system on this truck and then uh, refill. So this coolant that's in here is only a few months old. So I plan on reusing it. So I got a nice clean bucket here. And I'll hook up my 3 8 hose to this drain and I'll drain it in the bucket and then hopefully we can reuse this uh, coolant. So go ahead and stick your hose on there. And get that in your bucket. And then let's go ahead and loosen that. May have to grab some pliers. And it looks like I'll have to. And you guys don't have to drain this if you don't want to. Um, but it does make a big mess once you pull that EGR off. Only reason I'm doing this, I think, is because I want to reuse this coolant. So grab some pliers. And you might be able to twist better with that. Let's get it started here. And that just doesn't, I guess I tightened it too tight last time. Jeez. Let's try going down with them. Okay, so as you can see, got that draining into my clean bucket here. So go ahead and let that drain. And then really quick, show you what I did. I just took a piece of cardboard, cut a hole in it, and then fed that hose through it. That way, uh, no dust or dirt gets blown into that too. So next, go ahead and uh, pull your radiator cap off the secondary system here. And then come over here to the uh, secondary cooling system drain plug, which will be on the passenger side here. So go ahead and uh, drain that. And this one's a little harder to get uh, the plug. It's gonna be on the uh, backside back here. But if you take a little set of pliers, you can usually turn that. So it's gonna be the same thing. Grab your 3 8 hose. Get that on there. And 
I'll get that down into my bucket for this one. Same thing, I'm gonna probably reuse this coolant as well. So I got that to turn a little bit by hand. Let's try it again here. on here some more. Okay, so I got that pretty much open here and it should be draining in my bucket here, I'll show you. So I just did kind of the same thing here. You can see it starting to drain down in there. So go ahead and let that drain as well. And so just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect uh, both batteries. So grab you an eight millimeter and let's go ahead and pull these off the terminals. Same on this side. Next, come over here to your intake and we'll go ahead and disconnect the mass airflow sensor. So you got this red tab here, you just pull out like that. And then I believe you just squeeze right here. And it looks like, I'm not sure if that's broken right there or what. So squeeze that, and that comes off there like that. And since I am replacing this intake, I'm gonna pull all this off. So I got an eight millimeter right here. And then on the front side of your air filter housing here, you got these little tabs. Let's go ahead and open those up. And then you go ahead and lift up on this. And we should be able to pull this off now. Get that out of there. And then go ahead and pull your air filter out here. And then go ahead and remove this eight millimeter bolt right here. And then go ahead and pull your housing out of here. Now we'll go ahead and remove the rest of this intake tube here. But you got these uh, cooling lines here. Let's go ahead and pop up on that. And you got one back here. Kind of goes down and up. Another one right here. And then remove this eight millimeter bolt here. And then you got an eight millimeter hose clamp right here. Get this line out of the way so you guys can see. So that one right there, go ahead and loosen that one up. So now let's see if we can uh, get this out of the way. Go ahead and remove the rest of this intake here. Just kind of slide that out this way. And then I'm just gonna take a clean rag, just shove it right in here into the intake so nothing falls down in there. So now we'll go ahead and disconnect these two cooling lines from the EGR. And you got, there's two white tabs on each side. So you should be able to squeeze those together. Same with on this one. You can kind of see right there and then right here. So if you, and you may have to push down just a little bit. So squeeze those together, push down and then lift up. So just like that. Go ahead and do the same to this one here. And then if you want to get those white tabs off, you can kind of stick a small flathead here. Same with on the other side. Of course it pops back down there. Kind of like that. And you can 
can see. I'll show you. So that sits in there like that, and then it can snap on. And get this one off as well. This line right here, just grab yourself some pliers, squeeze this clamp together, and pull that off. Like that. And then you can go ahead and remove this line as well. So it's going to be the same thing. You got your quick disconnect tabs down below there. And it's actually going to be really hard to get to that one. So let me grab a screwdriver. So grab your flathead and come in on this side here. Push in on that tab. And then your finger on the other side here. And let's see if we can lift off. Just like that. And I'll go ahead and get this off of here as well. Okay, so we need to remove this hose as well. Um, but this goes all the way back behind the EGR there, down behind or under the PCM and all that. And then it goes down into the firewall down there behind the battery here. So I think I'll wait on that one. And uh, once we get this out, we'll see if we have enough room. And then uh, if we got to disconnect the PCM, if not, I may have to take out the battery or I may have to remove the inner fender well to get to that one. So then grab you a trim tool or something to pry up on this. Go ahead and pull this out here. that broke off in there so I'll have to see if I can get another one next go ahead and pull this line off the EGR here take your pliers squeeze that clamp and then try to work this off of here So next we need to um, get rid of this T right here and they give you a bar fitting so you connect this line to this one here. So let's try to get this T out of here. I think what I'll try is, let's see if I can just cut this with a pair of dikes here. So you can get that cut. Hopefully we can get this clamp off of here. Kind of like that. Just watch yourself because this is kind of sharp now. Bend that out of the way. And I'll do the same to this one here. Pull that line off of there. Let's save this one because this is the one we're going to reuse. And let's go ahead and get this T out of here. Just like that. Get this off. And same with this one here. So then take your supplied hose clamps here. Get those on each end. And then this is that barb fitting that they give you. Go ahead and push that in until it stops. Same with this end here. And now 
ounce. Take a seven millimeter and let's go ahead and tighten up these hose clamps. So like that. And I'm not sure why they give you such large hose clamps, but I'm gonna cut off this excess here. That's a little better. So then go ahead and unplug this sensor here. Should be able to push with your finger here. Just push in a little bit and then pull that off. And then same with this one here. Looks like we got a locking tab there. Try and slide that out. And then you should be able to just push down and Pull that one off. Grab your trim tool and go ahead and disconnect this from this bracket here. If you can get up under there. Something like that. And then uh, there's another one right here connected to the EGR. So you get your tool under here. Try to pull that up out of there. There you go. So looks like that. So now this is kind of a little free there. Next go ahead and um, plug this vacuum line right here. You may hear it hiss at you. Just like that. So then take that vacuum line and try to get this elbow off. You may have to just turn pretty hard here. And that should, it's supposed to come off there. There you go. It's kind of like that. And then they give you this little red vacuum cap. So go ahead and slide that on there. Actually doesn't go on there too well. Thought it would stick better. So since that cab doesn't fit on there too well, I think I'll put this back on and instead I'll just run this in here. So stick that kind of in there and then you take a small Phillips that fits that and just kind of push it in there. Pull your Phillips out. And that stays in there actually pretty good. And then uh, I'm just gonna stick this back on here. It's kind of like that. So then get you a 14 millimeter. And let's see if we can remove this probe out of here. Grab an eight millimeter and let's remove this bolt here, holding our exhaust pipe onto that bracket. Now go ahead and grab your eight millimeter and let's uh, get those two bolts that we loosened up earlier down there out of there. working so I may do the other one and uh, let's see if we can just pull it all at once once we get these other two up top out of here too so then get these two out that's what those look like so no washer or anything Slide on me. Let's 
don't want to lose that bolt there. So grab that one, and then let's see if we can just lift this out and uh, also grab this gasket here too, because that's going to want to slide off. Let me see if I can just pull this whole thing out of here with the bolts and everything. So let's go ahead and lift this up. Just kind of turn it. And that way you get bolt, both bolts still out of there. And then also down in there, you'll have a gasket as well. Looks like that. Then go ahead and do the same to your other pipe here. Pull these ones out. And then go ahead and disconnect that along with your gaskets. And then on top of the EGR, you got another clip here that's holding this cooling wire or cooling line on here. Let's go ahead and uh, take that off real quick. And of course, that one broke as well. So now I'll go ahead and disconnect uh, two of these PCM uh, looms here. And what you do. Just be careful on these. You pull back on this and then just kind of pull out there. Like I said, be careful because you don't want to bend any of those pins or anything in here. Same thing on this one. That should just kind of slide out of here. Not sure. Oh, it's because it's, it's uh, tied right there. So you got a clip right here on this bracket. So let me just plug that back in while I do this. Try to get that clip out of there. Sorry about that, camera fell over. looks kind of like that now let's see if we can get this out of here there we go so just kind of tuck that out of the way for now same with this other one kind of like that so I think now we are ready to start unbolting the EGR here so on the back side there you can see you got a 10 millimeter nut uh, attached to that bracket there. So let's go ahead and pull that nut off there first. And I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see me doing this, but I just got a 10 millimeter and a quarter inch ratchet here. Let's see if we can get that off of there. Wobble socket here. There we go. That's a lot easier. Okay, so there's that. And so it looks like there's another bolt underneath that bracket here. Like it's that little 
center there. So let me grab a bigger pry bar. So let me see if this bigger pry bar works. Get this off of here. that and then you can see got a little uh, nut with a stud there let's go ahead and remove that so then grab you a 12 millimeter and let's see if we can get that stud and nut off there just gonna try to get this in here Sorry if you guys can't see, but that's what that looks like. So you got a washer on there too. And then, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but you can see there's a stud on the very back there. And I felt back here, and it feels like there's nothing on it. So hopefully that's true. So just in front of that one that we just, so just in front of the one we removed, you'll have another one right here. This will be eight millimeter. Let's go ahead and pull that one off. And then in front of that one, you'll have one on this bracket right here that holds it down. Eight millimeters, so loosen that one. And you can see that one's a pretty long one there. And then keep going back and you'll see you got another one right down in there. And let's see. This PCM bracket's kind of in the way. Can't get a good grip on it there. So, so let's see if this one will work. So this next one is going to be a real pain. It looks like you can see it just in front of that one we just removed. But it's way back in there. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure out how I am going to get back in there. Alright guys, so I'm not sure if you can see this. But let's go ahead and try this. I get back in here. Tilt the socket just right to get in there and get on it. So maybe. So I think I'm on there right now. Let's see if I can break this free. And of course, I slipped off. So I'm going to try, you can see I'm on there with this deep well. Let me try that. Hopefully I don't slip off. Watch both hands here to try to pry down to you. And then I think I need to reposition. 
position. So it loosened a little bit, but I think I need to reposition every time. Try to get light in here to see. So you can kind of see back in there. Let's try this again. There we go. It's got to get that smaller, shallow socket in there to unscrew it. that one okay guys so i looked around uh looks like that is everything at least i hope um the only other thing i found was this uh there's this little clip here that goes onto that stud there so if you take that off it gives you a little more wiggle room here um so yeah i think that's it so now i did put a drain pan under there just in case even though we drain the cooling system Still may be some coolant that um, falls down. And I'm not sure, but looks like I may have a couple bolts here as well. All right, guys, so it looks like I missed um, these two bolts here holding this. It's a little plastic thing that this wire loom goes into, but it looks like that's still connected to the EGR. So I'm going to remove those two. Uh, eight millimeters there. And that is hard to get in there. Now that's free. And then, so it also looks like we got these two little like, I'm not sure what these are, just a little clips here. Let me just see if I can unscrew. These just pull out or unscrew. Not really sure. just holding that like little blanket on there and you got another one back in there It's just holding this looks like a little blanket on there so now yeah that's all it is and then it's hard for you guys to see but there's another one back there kind of where we pulled that last third bolt out behind here so let me see if I can get in here or just break that one off as well. Okay guys, so I'm not sure if you can see, but I ended up breaking that one as well. Just really hard to get back in there. So now let's see if we can get this out of here. Pretty sure that's everything now, so. 
I'm gonna try to just pry my hand here. Let's just see if we can kind of break it free first. All right, guys, so I can't believe I missed this one. So there is one bolt right here that I just noticed sitting behind this wire. So that's probably what's holding us up here. So let's go ahead and remove that eight millimeter there. And there is that one. Now let's see if I can get this pried up by hand. Probably not, but. There we go. And as you can hear, it didn't sound like any coolant came out. So let's see if I can work this out of here. Get my light out of the way. So I'm just gonna slowly move this towards the front. And looks like I'm getting caught on that wire and bracket down here. out of here. All right, so that's out. And as you can see, even though I drained the coolant out, you still made quite a bit of mess. So let me go ahead and clean this up real quick. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our uh, block off plate in there, cover up them holes. Um, so we ended up going with the pass-through system. So coolant still comes through and passes through instead of just the plain block off plate. They say that gives you, I don't know, it's like five to 15 degrees cooler, supposedly. Um, and you know, if you race or uh, sled pull or something, you know that even that five to 15 degrees can make a difference. So I recommend that. And then you got these two dowels here, they'll go on. So let me take some fresh, just got some fresh motor oil here. Let me just kind of coat these gaskets just in case they're a little dry here. Just go around them. Get them lubed up a little bit there. And uh, let's get this out of the way here. Go ahead and set that down. That can only go one way because you got your three holes there. And then I will kind of do the same thing here. Just put a little motor oil on here. Just to lube up that O-ring. Kind of like that. And then you'll take your cover. And again, that'll only go one way. And that'll sit right in there. You kinda gotta get it evenly here. Sit down at the same time like that. And then we give it three bolts that'll go in here. Started by hand. And then that will tighten those up, and those are going to be a five millimeter Allen head for these three here.
and I'm not sure on the torque, but you don't have to manhandle them. Just get them pretty snug. Call that good. Next we'll do this one here on the intake. And I was just trying to just see all that carbon. Just trying to clean that out a little bit here. So then just go ahead and get your block off plate for that. And again, just make sure that's clean on there. And that'll be this one, the flat one here. Get that in place, get those started. So moving on to this one here. So you will have to use the factory gasket that was on there. And it's gonna be this one here. You can see it says Ford Motor Company. And then uh, this will be your your plate right here. So go ahead and get that lined up and uh, drop that one down in there. And this is where the probe will go as well. So get your gasket lined up here. And then they give you two bolts with these, which I'm not really sure kind of wish they were more like the factory style. But they give you that and then also a washer too. So get those started. And go ahead and tighten those up with your five millimeter Allen head. So then grab that probe that we pulled out earlier and this will get threaded down into there. Grab your 14 millimeter and let's tighten that up. Right. So now let's see if we can get this coolant hose out of here. So it looks like, so if you fall it around and then if you see right there, there's like a little clip holding that on there to the firewall. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it just pulls right off there like that. Okay. So you take a look down here by the firewall so you can see that's where the hose goes into so you can see the white clip so you got two hoses there it'll be the bottom one and then it comes around and goes up so still gonna be quite a bit of a challenge to get that out of there let me see if I can reach my hand here on the left battery's still in the way here okay so and let's see if I can get this finger down in here. And that's still going to be hard to do. So you kind of turn it, it looks like. Okay. And let's see if we can get our fingers in here. It's still hard to do here. All right, guys, so I tried everything to get that cooling line off of the firewall there, and I can't seem to get it. So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to go ahead and remove this inner fender well here, and then hopefully I have better access to it and just get to it there. So go ahead and start moving all these 732nd uh, bolts along here.
They grab an eight millimeter, you got one right there. And then up in there, you got one as well. And then down along the front there, you can see you got two more right there. Go ahead and uh, get those ones out of there. So it looks like I got one more right here as well. Then just below that, you got a little clip there. Let's go ahead and pull that off as well. You can get up under there. And that broke off, so I'll have to get a new one for there. So now should be able to remove this out of here. And so now you can see that's the one we need to get off and that gets a lot better room down here. So like I said, let's go ahead and uh, see if I can uh, get this off of here. Like I said, it's kind of hard to get in here because of the uh, that little foam on here. It's hard to get your fingers up in here. get the one side off and then hopefully get the other side without this side clipping back in so let me see if I can rotate it here and So you got that one side off. Okay, so it's like coming now. There we go. I have a drain pan. So now you should be able to get this line out of here because we got a new one that we'll put on. So grab your new line. Of course, this is the one they supply you with the kit. And of course, this end is gonna go right up top on here. So make sure this is all cleaned up here. And go ahead and snap that in place. Just like that. And then you can rotate it and let's go ahead and feed this other end through and we'll connect that down there. So go ahead and remove your clip first. Get your flathead kind of under there. Same with the other side. Take your new hose and go ahead and press that on there until it snaps. So kind of like that. Just give it a good tug. Make sure those clips are in there correctly. I think like that. Go ahead and uh, continue assembling some of this. So that new coolant line that we just put on there, you'll take this other one that we teed here, and that's gonna go 
right onto there. So I'm glad I grab my pliers here. And let's get this hose clamp on here. So kind of like that. And then let's see if I can get this back in here. So just like that. Next, we can go ahead and uh, plug back in our PCM here. So I'll do this one first. Let's get that in there. Pull that latch up. Same with this one. And then you can put your little clip down in here. Like that. And then you go ahead and behind this cooling line here, got this... Uh, little clip that goes over that stud you can put that back on and then what I'm gonna do is so these sensors that went to the EGR I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap them up in some electrical tape just to protect them and then I'll zip tie them to this line here just to kind of get them out of the way and uh, just in case he decides to put his EGR back on for some reason All right, guys, so I noticed on this uh, this vacuum line that we plugged earlier. So if you follow that around, it kind of goes down around here. And then it also comes around and it connects to this line here. So I'm wondering if I pull this right here, if that uh, red plug will fit onto here. So let's go ahead and try that. So just pull this off of here. And then... Pull this out of here. And then you can stick that. Yeah, I see that fits better there. So that must have been how you do it. Because then you can get this out of here. You got this kind of just locks into that there. Same with right here. And then you should be able to just kind of Pull this out of here. Yeah, it looks like it's held on down by a clip right here. So now we should be able to get this out of here. Just kind of feed that through. Like that. So there's one last part. Okay, so they give you this little bracket here in the kit, but they don't really tell you what it's going to. So I'm not sure, because you can see this cooling line just kind of bounces here. So I'm wondering if this kind of goes right here. And then, of course, this clip broke right here. And then I wonder if this just kind of clicks into there like that. Um, if you turn this, so it'd go on there kind of like that. Not really sure if that's what it's for, but I think that's probably what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and get this on. And then uh, I wonder if I could find some of these style clips here. If not, I can just zip it tight through that bracket there. So go ahead and uh, they give you a bolt and then also a uh, nut here. So I'll get that on real quick. Then go ahead and tighten those up. And those will be a 11 millimeter for the nut and the bolt. And I'll go ahead and kind of just get that to where it needs to be. It's about kind of like that. Said, I'll see if I can get some more of this style clip. If not, I may just zip tie it for now. Now I'm going to secure this hose kind of how it was pushed up into the firewall there uh, with this clip. So I just went ahead and cut the zip tie that was around it. And uh, this is the original one that was 
So it was zip tied kind of like that. So I cut the zip tie and then uh, kind of just poked the old zip tie out of there. So I got a new one here. So I'll wrap that around the new uh, cooling line there and try to get it up on that stud with this again. So not sure how well you guys are gonna see this, but so this hose here, you can see there's a this stud right here. So this will just uh, clip onto there like this. And then that'll hold this uh, cooling hose on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this kind of wrapped around here. It's kind of like that. My camera's falling here. All right, sorry about that guys. My camera was falling, but you can see I got it on there. So just kind of like that. That way uh, this cooling line's not rubbing up against everything. So let me go ahead and cut the zip tie here. And then for right now, I just kind of did something like that on this. You can see it's holding it on there pretty good until I can find ones that I can push the clip into. All right guys, so now we should be ready to uh, put the intake on here. And I just want to show you something. So I got a little helper that just dropped down on me. Look at that guy. Ugh. But uh, also to show you here, so before I go ahead and put the intake in, so if you look down in there, there's another little friend down in there look like just an old mouse nest. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my vacuum and uh, clean that up down there as well. So next you can go ahead and start installing your intake. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, we're upgrading to a SMB one, so I'll be putting this in. So then grab your eight millimeter and go ahead and tighten that up. So now let's see if we can get this part on the intake here. Of course, I removed my rag there. And let's go under here. And I'm gonna try to get it in the intake here first for uh, the air box. As you guys saw well actually you didn't see but i had to remove that bolt just to kind of get this up some because it's kind of a pain to get up in here so then make sure these are all lined up here and just go ahead and kind of tighten these up and then in the kit they gave you this little foam insulation tube which will go right on this cooling line here to keep it from rubbing on your tube there so just kind of wrap this around, kind of like that, and then it has a sticky back on it. So just kind of stick that together first like that, and then you overlap it with that. Just like that, and I'll probably put it face down. So something like that. And then of course, go ahead and plug in your mass airflow sensor here. Get that pushed in. Push your locking clip in. You get your air filter in place, and you have to rotate your hose clamp here. Take your eight millimeter and uh, go ahead and tighten this up. 
And then go ahead and get your uh, cover on here. Just make sure everything's tight. So like that. So they also include this, uh, it's like this rubber grommet, which I believe goes, just kind of sits there like that. And then they give you this piece. You go through the cooling line here. And then you gotta kind of bend that down. And they give you this bolt, 10 millimeter bolt with a washer. And then it just kind of goes through here. Tighten that. So I think it's just something kind of like that. And then this just kind of sits on top there just to keep these hoses from rubbing. So now we should be ready to start filling. And uh, you can see my hose fell off there, but let's go ahead and tighten that secondary uh, radiator drain here. Get that tightened up. And then the same with your uh, primary. Go ahead and pull that hose off. And go ahead and tighten that up. Just like that. All right guys, so if you watched the last video when I did a uh, coolant drain and refill on this truck, I use this OEM tools. Uh, it's pretty much a vacuum coolant fit refiller. OEM 24444, I'll put a link in the description. Works really well. So it pulls a vacuum on the cooling system and then uh, refills it so you don't have any air bubbles or anything. And uh, Ford says this is how you're supposed to do it, but I'm sure you can get away with just filling it and uh, topping it off. Um, and then also, what I drained earlier in the video, I'll be reusing since I did cover it, since it's not that old of coolant, so I'll be reusing that. But I do have some extra from the last time as well, just in case we need this. And like I said in that last video, Ford discontinued the uh, orange coolant they normally use, and now they have switched over to the yellow, pretty much the green stuff. Um, and they do say that it's fine to mix the uh, green with the orange and you'll have no problems, so. Let's go ahead and uh, get this hooked up and we'll start filling. So you'll go ahead and take your uh, your 40 millimeter plug they give with you in the kit. Set that in there. Then go ahead and grab your tool. Get that push down in there. And then go ahead and tighten that up. And then there should be a good seal on that. So then go ahead and take your uh, Venturi valve here and go ahead and hook that up. And then make sure all your valves here are closed. And you can go either way. That's closed, that's open, or that's closed. Let me grab my compressor hose here. Go ahead and hook that up. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start pulling the vacuum on the cooling system. So I'll go ahead and open up my compressor line here, and then I'll open up this one. Make sure you keep this one closed until we're ready to fill with coolant. And then uh, it'll take a few minutes, but we'll look at our gauge there. And once that gauge stops moving and our uh, radiator hoses and everything are collapsed, then we know we got a vacuum pulled, and then we can go ahead and shut these valves. So like I said, just go ahead and open this. Probably get loud here. And then if you take a look here, you can see it's starting to pull a vacuum on there. So we'll give us a couple minutes here. And then you can also see it's starting to collapse our radiator hoses. Alright guys, so you can see 
pretty much stopped right there, about negative 18 or so, and it's not uh, going down any more than that. So I'm gonna call that good. Plus, our cooling hoses are fully collapsed. So what to do now? Go ahead and shut this off, and then also shut off your Venturi valve here. And I'll go ahead and let this sit a couple minutes. We'll just make sure we don't got any leaks in the cooling system here. Okay, so now, like I said, this is what I pulled out earlier. So I got a whole five gallon bucket of it and I had it covered so I didn't get any contaminants in there. So then go ahead and grab your, uh, your line here, going from your tool. And you can see this has like a little uh, filter on it as well. So go ahead and stick that down in your bucket here. And let me get some vice grips because this just wants to float up on you. All right, so you can see I just took a pair of vice grips there. That way I can get it way down in there and it kind of stays there. So now we need to get the air that's still in this line and then going down in there, we need to get that out. So what we're gonna do is leave our compressor hooked up. I'm gonna open these back up so we're still pulling a vacuum. And then I'll slowly open this and then you'll see your coolant start to come up and then you'll want to shut it off right away right here before it gets in there. And then we can shut this off and uh, disconnect our air compressor line there. So, so go ahead and open this up. Same with this one. And then slowly open this and just watch the coolant rise up. Just like that. Shut this one off, shut that one off, and go ahead and disconnect your uh, compressor line because we're done with that. So now if they're cooling all the way up here, we can uh, go ahead and open this line and then it'll start feeding coolant into the cooling system and it should bring you right about at the cold fill line or a little above and then also you want to keep an eye on this. If this starts getting low, go ahead and add some more. I got some in my other bucket from the secondary system I'll dump in here as well. And then, like I said, I got that other stuff there that I mixed with uh, distilled water 50-50. So let's go ahead and uh, open this up and we'll start feeding it in. And then you can also watch your gauge up here. And this will slowly go back down to zero. And then once it hits zero, then you know you're full of coolant. So go ahead and open this up. And you know that's starting to fill there. And like I said, just keep an eye because your level will start going down here. So you can see slowly dropping there. And I did have to add a little bit there. So just keep watching this. So I went ahead and dumped my other bucket in here from the secondary system. And you can see it's still slowly going down and you can actually hear it filling in there. All right, so you can see we're just about to hit zero here. And just go ahead and open this up the rest of the way. Once that hits zero, like I said, you see, you can see the line just above the uh, cold line there. So now that we're at zero, that should be good. So then what we can do is uh, go ahead and close this valve here. And then you can go ahead and uh, loosen this up. We get this pulled off, and I think once we pull this off, the level will drop a little bit here. Yep, you can see it's starting to go down. And then also our uh, coolant hoses here are full. So we're gonna pull that off the rest of the way, kind of let that drain there. And then pull this off 
And then you can see with that off, our level is perfect right where we need to be. And we shouldn't need to add any uh, once this warms up and cools off. So that's why this tool is, uh, I really like it. It works awesome, especially on these trucks that take a lot of coolant. So then go ahead and get your uh, radiator or your uh, Degas bottle cap back on here. And let's go ahead and move on to the secondary system. So now moving on to the secondary system, you want to grab your 31 millimeter, put that in there, and then uh, grab some vice grips. And you'll want to plug this line here, because if not, you won't be able to pull a vacuum on it. So I'm just going to take these and we'll pinch off this line pretty much. Let's get this inserted in here. pinched so it's sitting kind of like that so now we should be able to pull a vacuum on it so grab your tool and go ahead and set that in there and tighten that up Sure you got a nice tight seal grab your uh, air compressor line with your venturi valve go ahead and connect that and just kind of point this away from the camera so it doesn't make a ton of noise here and then uh let's go ahead and start pulling the vacuum on that so go ahead and uh make sure this one's closed for your coolant and then uh, go ahead and open this one. And then this one. And you start seeing it pull back in here. Just like that. So I'll wait until that stops. All right, so as you can see, pretty much the same as the primary. So right at uh, negative 19, negative 18. And doesn't seem to be moving from there. Let's go ahead and uh, shut this off. Same with this one. And we'll let that sit a couple minutes. Make sure that stays and we uh, don't have any leaks. Okay, so I let that sit a couple minutes here and you can see the needle hasn't moved. So that means uh, we got a nice good seal on the cooling system, no leaks. And uh, since we already drained the air out of this uh, from the other side, we can go ahead and uh, Disconnect our air valve here, Venturi valve, because we don't need that. And so you can see it got a little bit of cooling in there. Hopefully that's enough. If not, I'll go ahead and add some more. And then uh, let's go ahead and uh, open this up. So that needle should start going down and you can hear it starting to fill. All right, so it looks like I'm getting a little low on coolant here. So um, if you guys need to, you can also shut that off to pause it to fill and uh, it won't affect anything. Cause you can see still at negative 10 there. So I got a little ways to go. So I'll go ahead and uh, top this off a little bit here and then I'll open it back up. So you can see just about ready to hit zero here. And Getting pretty close. You just want to make sure you don't suck any air up out of that. And so it looks like we are just hitting zero right now. So then you can go ahead and uh, pull off your vice grips here. Turn that, tuck that back down into there. Now let's go ahead and uh, release this. here get this out of the way so then go ahead and check your level here 
and you can see we are right at the full line so we are perfect right there so then you can go ahead and replace your cap here Next, you can go ahead and uh, hook up your batteries. And then go ahead and get your uh, inner fender well back in place here. Just double check that line to make sure that uh, it's not leaking there. And we'll get this back in place here. Grab your uh, eight millimeter and go ahead and stick these ones in here. And then don't forget these two uh, bottom eight millimeters down here as well. Okay, so that's going to be it for the video. Again, this was a 2015 Ford F350 with a 6.7 liter power stroke diesel. Went ahead and got rid of all the EGR. And again, we're going to be uh, transforming this truck into a race truck and also a sled puller. So we got more to come on it. So if you're interested, check that out. And it'll be trailer to the track and everything. So hopefully this video helps you out. Again, stay tuned. I'll do another video on the 5-inch exhaust install. And uh, if you haven't already... Check out some of my other videos, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.